YouTube, there is no firearms in this video. Welcome back to the Loki Ergoner YouTube channel. In this episode, I will be shooting the Crossman 20 to 40 with the newly installed 14.6 inch barrel. I did not take the time to clean it before installing it and that was on purpose just so I could test the accuracy. Basically, I want to take around 10 shots with two different pellets and then I want to clean it with a patchworm kit to see if the accuracy will increase from around 7.33 yards in the basement 22 feet Canada. I will do this one camera style just so I can edit this way quicker but I will shoot 5 Holopoint 14.3 grains and then 5 JSB RS 13.43 grain and then I will clean it with you guys and then I will shoot 10 more to see if it looks better with a red dot and a fairly short distance so I don't really know it is slightly colder in the basement today. It is only 21 degrees Celsius. The good old drop of Felgen oil. Usually it is around 25 degrees Celsius. But the only important thing in this test is that I do both tests at the same temperature in about the same conditions. I mean, rate of fire wise. <coughs> My O-ring still looks pretty good, so I will not be oiling it dry fire in a safe direction only one time can I blow my bottle away safety nope you really can hear the the little is it does all right so this thing should be fairly on I will be using splatter burst one inch targets and let's see what it does all right, so I made some cool little art with colors and I will shoot it down. All right, so that was five shots fairly fast. I think that's not too bad. I'd say that's pretty comparable with what we got the, uh, with the other barrel, but I don't really know. All right, so we got a tiny bit of spread, but that's really not bad. I don't really think I can do much better than this with a red dot, which covers at least half of this dot, even on number two brightness. This one is a lot better than the other one that Buckrail sent me, by the way. So I recommend this one if you got the extra budget. But yeah. Now let's go clean the barrel and see what happens. By the way, I was using a sandbag to make those shots, but I figured that this bipod on the Buckrail forearm will help me to hold this carbine while I clean the barrel. What we will be using today is this patchworm kit, which is a very handy multi-caliber barrel safe kit. Basically what you get in there is a bunch of inserts for the different calibers and then you get some wet and dry patches with a cord thingy, weed eater string to pull your patches and clean your barrel. Some air guns have seals in the bridge so you want to use a rubber safe cleaner like Ballistol and you don't want to use a art brush or you will mess up some o-rings and stuff so this is the perfect kit for your air guns. As you can see this is a fairly tight breech axis and I will easily be able to clean that up with this kit. The grain attachment which is attached to it basically is 0.20 caliber so you need the other kit if you have a 0.177 but those are pretty affordable and the white insert in there is 0.22 caliber but I've been recommended to use the 0.20 first for very dirty barrels and I don't know if this one is very dirty so let's do that let's take a patch up in the wet thingy Simply line that up and poke a hole in the middle. You then slide it back to the insert. You can now insert that in your bridge buddy. Put that in there, slide that until it's reached the other end. Now you can pull a little bit. And once you get there, just feed it a little bit straighter to make sure that you don't mess up anything. And here you go. Let's try to make ASMR. So 
So this is the first pull with a 0.20 attachment and it is fairly dirty. I will do one more pull like this and switch the patch side and do two more pulls and then I will pick you guys back up. <laughs> this is not worth doing another pull I guess kinda nah let's not waste time let's use a new patch after only three passes with the smaller 0.20 caliber attachment this is the first pass with the new patch and it is already pretty dirty even though we don't have the white color to make it tighter this was two passes on each side and it is kinda as dirty as it was I will keep doing this and tell you guys when it starts to get cleaner. By the way, don't use too much ballistol or turn your air gun upside down to not put a bunch of oil in the transfer port and use a straw or whatever to protect your baffles if you have a LDC, but I can't. All right, so this was two passes on each side. It is definitively starting to get slightly cleaner. I will now use this 0.22 caliber color to make everything fit tighter in there and scrub a lot harder you simply insert it at the same place that you will insert the patch and slide that down it is now resting on the green insert this patch will now scrub a lot harder because of the bigger diameter of the color usually you get some cool noise while you do that so let's see that's definitely harder to pull and my string is full of ballistol Don't pull too hard, you might have done something wrong, but if you cannot get it to go, try pulling like that and it will be less slippery. And here you can hear it scrubbing. This is scrubbing really nice. You can see rifling grooves on there. This is what we got with two pass on each side. Let's try to get an, a decent audio clip now. Nah, didn't do the classic patch worm noise. Might have to keep the cameras running for the dry patch. <coughs> Back in the days I was using classic weed eater string which does work but this is a lot better if you have the couple of bucks that it takes to get one. It scrubs a lot tighter. This is getting fairly clean for a barrel we did get a pretty good change in color I will now move to the dry patches to dry that up a little bit and we're good to go I like to wipe both my fingers in the string before going for the dry patch and now you do the same thing but with a dry patch can we get the cool patchworm noises kinda Hopefully you can hear that. It is fairly clean and dry now. I will use the last one just to make sure. I usually would not, but since this is a CO2 and we're making it test, I will try to get it as dry as possible so it takes less shot to get back to the usual accuracy. Usually it takes a few shots to do that, so I will try to keep that in mind in the, the test. But yeah, you guys don't need to see that, so let's cut to the shooting part. Since I did not cut the cameras, again, you can see it. I only did two pass on one side, it did clean up a little bit of stuff, but that's good enough. Leave a thumbs up if you think that this framing is not optimal. We got a pretty similar group, maybe a slight point of impact shift, but that might just be me. I don't really know. There is definitely one out there, but yeah, that's really not too bad. This is one centimeter. This is the group, most of it at least. We did get one kind of flyer like this one. I don't really know, and usually it takes a few shots to get the accuracy back, so that's pretty good to start with. 
I will take a little break to let time for the CO2 to be better for the RS like I did last time and then I will most likely shoot a few holo point 14.3 grain out here to see what happens. Okay. I mean, I did better, no flyers this time, so that might be luck or might be the barrel cleaning. I will shoot 10 or 15 holo point 14.3 grains right there just to empty the CO2 and see how accurate it is and that's about it. Yep, no flyers again. I definitely was shooting faster than in any of those groups and we did better so I think that the barrel cleaning might have removed the occasional flyer that we got this is we still add one right there but that was the leading process we might have better accuracy now who knows y you judge that but I don't care I wanted to shoot at the same target but I, I can't see much of it anymore so let's do that Yeah, you can see the CO2 starting to wander a little bit, but that's not too shabby for 10 shots with the end of the CO2 cartridge. I should be able to degas it by now, yes. That was nothing. Let's take one last look at this. I do believe that we got an improvement with all of the pellets after cleaning the barrel. We also might have a light point of impact shift with the crossmans but that might be me with the red dot who knows and this confirms that 35 shots might be pretty much what you get out of this even if you're blinking and now I need to make an outro I don't know for you guys you can tell by the results yourself but I do believe that cleaning this barrel with a patchworm kit did improve the accuracy it is pretty hard to shut that off. I know that a red dot is not the best optic to do accuracy tests but we got some pretty consistent results with both pellets so I, I don't think I am the problem or the optic is the problem and I do believe that we got a light improvement from cleaning the barrel. It seemed to remove the occasional flyer which would make sense because it was very dirty by the way this does not mean that cleaning any barrel will make it shoot better but you very rarely get any negative effects and if it does it usually comes back to the same accuracy or better after 3 to 20 shots depending of the high or low spots in your barrel this will be about it for today thanks for watching make sure to check out splatter burst targets patchworm kits and buckrail custom airgun accessories if you are interested into any of their product and i'm out did that work or i'm out <laughs>